come to face to face the program that frontally discusses political and social issues in nigeria the weekly program brought to you on wednesday by 6 p.m nigerian time anchored by prince ewemade concourse powered by gcsdn join us Good evening to all our wonderful viewers all over the world and welcome to Face to Face program. I am your host, your brother, Prince Ewemade Konkons. Tonight, we are going to be discussing about the negative experience that you may have witnessed or observed during your period of living in the Western world or the western atmosphere that's what we're going to be discussing about tonight uh despite the uh, perceived a lot of life in western nations african migrants african migrant communities residing within this within the western nation may have one or twice experienced some kind of negative effect over their course of continuing to reside in the western worlds or western climes like we may refer to it uh, these are some of the programs that we are going to be discussing tonight uh we also going to a little take a step backward from the usual English, also bring it, bring it down to the level of the average Nigerians on the street, the commonants. So uh, we'll be also dissecting or digesting or diluting uh, our conversation in Pidgin English. So, like I said, we're going to we are going to be talking about uh, these uh, issues, whatever you may have encountered, experienced, things that you might have observed over your course of living in the Western world or the Western atmosphere. We, that's what we're going to be discussing about tonight, because there's quite a lot of things that uh, you know we want our fellow compatriots all over the world east west south from all the way from the united states canada australia south africa new zealand uk europe wherever part of the continent south africa south america south, no, south north america whatever part of the continent that you're going to be joining us or watching this program from today we want you to be able to express uh some of the things the negative effect some of the things you made uh, you might have encountered over the, your course of residing in those in those nations, so we're gonna we we uh, we're gonna talk about some of the things where you don't experience for Western world. Uh, me as the anchor of this program, I will still talk about the, some of the things where I don't see, and I will also provide solution to some of the things where I believe say need to be done. You know, so as I just did. Uh, as I was talking to you guys, my very own brother, my friend, who is going to be a part of this program as long as I, this program exists, is just joined us on this studio. And uh, going forward from next week, where Wednesday, we're going to have a program where people can call in and discuss about some of the issues, things that they might have that might have occurred over their life living in the Western world. So we want to our people to start getting the first time information because you know they said uh, lack of knowledge is what most of our people suffer today. The reason we are where we are as a nation or as a continent is because of lack of knowledge. If those do, those who have come before us have explained to us or have also gave us the kind of leeway for us to understand what the western world is all about perhaps 
most of those who find their way through one way or the other means to come to the Western world might, have, might, have not, might not have been here today. So going forward from next week, Wednesday precisely, there's going to be a on my screen where you can call into the program and tell us you feel anywhere in the world, wherever you reside, as long as you're Nigerian or African, because I'm a Nigerian first, I'm also a very Pan-African who believe in the Pan-African movement. So we want you to tell us exactly what you feel, what you've experienced in your country of uh, abode, what you think might be the solution to a way out of it. So let me bring my brother, my friend, uh, a distinguished gentleman, a man that speak like, in my own opinion, a man that speak the speak the uh, Queen's English. It is for me. I see him as a British, a British. He doesn't he doesn't belong to the Nigerian territory. He's a British man. Let me bring him over. He likes to speak English. For me, uh, I'm not uh, too much of an Englishman, but I get the word done. Let me bring him over. Yeah. Hey, my very my own dear, brother, I'll be, yeah. be proper as a man to the core, proper, full blooded from from Ahmed Osha, Papa from Odugbe, Mama from Ukunu, pure breed, no mistake. Pure breed. Now, like, this English now, money we tell them, so make we just use them. I may not be like say we spoil them, but the rest of it, ah, uh, Omiaba, American, pure breed, as a man. No, oh, yeah, wow. oh, yeah, wow. <laughs> straight up. <laughs> Greetings, I greet you in the name. Of, I greet you, my I brother. Greet you, you my know brother. the name of the most high almighty God. How are you today? Happy Sunday to you and your family. Same to you and all the audience watching. It's a great day, it's an honorable day, and it's a great privilege day. It's a good thing. And every time we come together, I feel really Thank blessed. You. And I feel the opportunity to share thank you so much. some of thank our you. own joint concerns. So thank you for always having me. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. You know, going forward, I'm going to have you on every of my program because I've just introduced Amen. something new into my program, whereby uh, Nigerians, Africans indeed, will be able to call into the program and tell us exactly where they're calling from one, Two, what the country they reside in. Three, how do they feel? How they do the, the, the kind of treatment they get from the, their country of uh, of residency? What is going on? Mm -hmm. They need to tell us so that we can also, you and I can also educate Nigerians and Africans going forward. Because you know what? People think that we that live in the diaspora, it's all that rosy. We are living in an atmosphere where everything is provided for us, but they don't see what we see. We are uh, like they say saying in my place that no cow is there. In my in English, you the person that goes in front of you in the stream knows how deep the stream is. Mm -hmm. You and That's I right. we live here in the diaspora. We know how deep it is. We know what is going on exactly. Nobody can come here now and baboozle you or bamboozle me because no you way. know why? We already know what's going on. You know what time is it? You know this too. But those in Nigeria right. selling their properties, who are selling their properties, selling all their life and what they've suffered for in Africa in order for them to come here and clean somebody's house, they don't understand what we're going through. They don't understand what is going on. This we are enjoying the luxury of life. We're enjoying the electricity, the good roads, the good health care, and all the things that comes with it. But again, is that all to it when it comes to living your life to the full potential? It is not, in my own opinion. So let me quickly uh, take us to the first, uh, my first question to you, my brother. I want you to share with my audience some of the negative experience that you might have encountered over your decades of residing in the Western world. The floor is for you, sir. First, yeah, thank you. First thing first, the thing is just for purpose of clarity. I want to be very clear, say it is very difficult to tell someone with all the passion that they want to run away from Africa, not just Nigeria, and say, don't. Because if you calculate all the money you use to process with uh, buy ticket and everything. If you put that together, 
If now Lagos they leave you, come on for Lagos, go Edo State, go Ogun State, go Abel, go Kano, Kano, any of those places. You can start a business afresh. And it's very difficult because the inspiration or the aspiration for something better is there. However, then again, we in Nigeria, uh, we Nigerians that live in the diaspora are also not making people understand the reality of it. Uh, like last time when we talked, where a doctor and a lecturer sold all their inheritance just for them to come and live in UK and, and to be a, a care worker. And at the end of the day, they are looking at their Hello, something happened or you went off or we went off. Yeah, I can see I can see you. I can see you, but can your you line is me? having some some kind of answer. I can see you. Hello. I can hear you, I can see you, but your line is having a stand. We went off. We went off for a bit. No, I'm online. No, I'm online. I can see you. The uh, the enemy is at work. Can you see me? Can you see me? Now you can. They are not in Nigeria. My line is Hello. connected directly, so it's it's directly from my broadband. I can I can I can it's hear you. Computer. I can I'm... see you. Can you hear me? I can see you. I can hear you. But sometimes you know some of this and the enemies of progress, those who does not want this information that we are trying to share to go out there in the public domain, they try to interrupt in our system. But nevertheless, we are not going to mind them. We're going to focus on the on the message. If you can hear me, continue from where you stop. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Uh, yeah, we're back. We're back now. I can see you now. We are so seeing. Okay, you can see me now. Now I've been. I, was, I can see you. I can see we, you. I've been. I've been seeing we, you on the screen. We, we did, we, for you to tell someone who has already preconditioned their mind that life will be better yeah I'm back on again so that carry I'm back on. I'm back on. I don't know what can't I can see you. I can see you. Yeah. You're on screen. I can see you, and I'm sure my audience can see you. I can see you too as well. Good. Back to my point. Like I was saying, I said yeah, it's very continue. difficult yeah. to tell people. Who, have, who believe that unless they leave the country, their fortune will never change, their aspiration will never change. It's very difficult. But another thing is, those of us who did the diaspora, we are, when we go back home, we are very dishonest in telling them the truth, how living and surviving here. Now, you will just come to UK, we we'll take you every three to five years before you even forget your footing. And let's eliminate the paper or no paper level because some people come with COS, healthcare things, some call a student visa. After that runs out, the whole, whole thing of getting your regularity of your paper, the immigration, they said it takes average 10 years or more in some cases. However, the living year is another thing. Being able to survive here, it takes a lot of many things for it to be. Because one, apart from the paper thing, the level. For somebody who is a professor already in Nigeria, to come here, before he can get to the level of becoming a lecturer to a professor level, is going to take an average of 10 years of what he's already achieved. So they're very comfortable. And many of these people, when they come to UK, who's, who's at the top of their game in Nigeria, they are OK to do a media job because of the societal provision good road, security, cost of electricity, and good school. Many of these people sell all their fortune to come to UK. Most of their kids are in the private school, very expensive schools. They come here, their kids are in public school. 
and they are all good school. My kids went to public schools as well. And they are very, very good schools compared to Nigeria. See, that lifestyle choice is the problem. That lifestyle direction is the problem. And so in that Nigeria also, hello, in that Nigeria, there are quite a lot of other people as I well who are very, very, who are very, very successful. And they've not left, they're not living in Nigeria, neither is their kids live in Nigeria. Even when their kids leave Nigeria to go study, they all come back, go to the north. That's very common with northern people. When the kids come to you abroad, they all come back because they create opportunity for them, either in the government or in their business. But my key point is, living in the West, the thing where our eyes they see, there are very few of you that our mouth they talk for people outside to, to appreciate. Although there are some success, because I see some in UK, there's some Nigerians getting to be a mayor of some cities. Mayor of a city, you have nothing. You have no power, nothing, nothing. You know, it's just a ceremonial thing. You do the nationality thing. You do all this. It's just a ceremonial thing. So it's not a big deal. But when it comes to successful growth, it's either you, you like Kemi Baninoch or the, look at the black minority on Asians in the political space in, in conservative in this country. You see that for you to be able to grow in a society like this, you have to have self-hate. You have to have self-hate to the point that you hate your people. You, you, you are constantly attacking your people. You are saying derogatory thing about them. You hate them with everything. They promote you. Even look at the GB news, the black lady, the Ghanaian black lady there. She does not see anything good about Africa and she looked like a charcoal. She black past black and war wo -wo like a goat, even goat fine pass her. But she's constantly attacking African people, African country, even with Megan and everything. Those are the kind of people they want to promote. On the other hand, look at Dr. Shola, who is full-blooded Nigerian, highly skilled, highly educated lady, who is totally pro-Africa, pro-black, pro-Nigeria. She's constantly being attacked because she said the truth. And she's unafraid, unabashed. She's constantly being attacked. Occasionally, I've, I've brought into a TV program only for her to be ganged up and attacked. But she knows how to hold her ground. You know, her Nigerian blood strong. She knows how to hold her ground. And if you die that down into a normal living society or a job, you see, you are more experienced, more qualified work. You are more experienced, more qualified while you're working. And the moment you voice your head or try to show an advancement, they'll think you're arrogant and they'll try to cut you down, whereas they're promoting themselves. And that is expected. I remember a court case, a Ghanaian guy that worked with Acne Council for a long time, highly educated, gave, they kept on promoting people who are not Black, Asian like him, over him. And these are the people who even train. And at some point, you have to take them to court. It won't half a million because there was evidence. And why? This is acne cancer. And why? Because it's a Ghanaian. Even though he has acquired his British citizenship then, he's still an African. So when you see things like that, if you want to live in this country and you're happy to be an average human being, the security guard, the cleaner, just very average, that's okay. But if you have aspiration to be a greater than that, the level of sacrifice you're willing to give by self-denying, cultural denying, and try to be like them, and any time opportunity comes for you to stand for your people, you disown them, you disgrace them, or you call them names, you are then celebrated and brought to the mainstream because you become one of them, self hating black people. Those are the alternative people that actually grow in this country. I can list Kemi Baninoch, or what's his name, who is in an MP in court. It's self-loathing. So is that the kind of person you want to be in order for you to be averagely successful? There are many Nigerians who are successful here who are not associated with the government and everything. If you go through the private enterprises, that's why I see a lot of Nigerians decide to set up their business in the UK. They try to set up their own schools, their college, their training, their account, because they've got to a point in the company where they cannot go any further. I'm like, have it. I'm the brain behind this place. Now let me go set up my own thing. 
So, but those Nigerians in Nigeria there, I don't see that. They don't see the struggle. They don't see the challenges. All they see is the good living. You go to Nigeria with 5,000 pounds, you're a millionaire. You spend two, three weeks, you are out. But even if you have 5,000 pounds, I mean, how much thing can you do with it, to be honest? To be honest, I can take you to a restaurant whereby you eat, it's about 1,000 pounds just to have a dinner plus. You understand? So those are the kind of things that we don't communicate to Nigerians and everything. But the point is, if we also look at the Nigerians that are coming, these are the professionals, the middle class. There are more middle class Nigeria in Nigeria coming now than ever before. Back in the days, is the poor and who below average when they come here because they come, they get security deal, they get they fine. But now professionals, nurses, doctors. My older brother I run an hospital. And he was yeah, he was talking, said they've lost close to about 300 nurses. One of they have residents in hospital, over 300 nurses and so many specialist doctors, specifically to UK and Canada. That their level of recruitment. Now they are recruiting professional doctors from UK to come and do a specialist treatment in Nigeria and paying them a fortune. Whereas the specialists they have, they live in. Never about payment anymore. It's just the comfort of life. Just to live where there's constant electricity, there's good road, and you can live without any stress. Like my house, sometimes we, most times we know the lock our door. Even the other day, uh, outside the house, you park, we leave our car, they will not lock the car for days. For days, and nothing happened. My my range of our car, I leave out for for yeah travel. I where I park, I park at the back of the side. The window of one side was wide and the door wasn't locked for almost three weeks before my wife find out and nothing happened nothing was missing you cannot even do that inside your compound in your own house and park your car without locking it they even though you lock your gate then go carry the car through and pass your gate in nigeria and still build the car let alone so those are the things so i can't really blame those who are frustrated and want to leave now we, we do need to also tell them the reality. When I was contesting as governor of federal state and I was going around the rural place, oh, but I'm not going to lie to you, the level of poverty, the level of the level of bad road, the level, the level of nothingness. When you say absolute nothingness, it's painful to see that you see somebody. And you give them just 10,000, it'd be like, say, you give them one million. You see somebody with a dry cassava, go sell and eat some as they're living. Of course, they don't get light, beer, electricity, because no light, nothing, they get one well. But imagine the fall sick. Imagine that child, they have decided, okay, they won't go to university or college. They're screwed. Now, that child don't get opportunity to go invest because there's no public funding, nothing. That child now suddenly see this uncle or this brother who is coming in and every time say, you're from UK. What do you think that child would think? He would think, I want to go there to prosper. Or that man, I want to go there to prosper. I don't see myself going to Lagos. or waiting in Lagos soon. And that's the problem. And we, Nigerians, here must get in politics of Nigeria. That is the, the worst thing that is happening. We will be there because we are not engaged. We talk a lot about Nigeria and everything, but we don't engage. Get involved in the politics. Become a party person. Know who's your local ward chairman. Know who's your uh, local government uh, chairman, regardless of the party. Find out who he is. Start calling him like mad and see what you can do to support. That local school in your village or your community, that local road, or go do this road. Go do you need. We in that are ready to do something. Find out your own local government. Don't even think of the whole state. Chairman is a PDP man, Dr. Kelly. It's a personal friend. Anytime I go Urumi, I always reach out to him. And it's a pastor, it's a PDP man. Who, not be APC, not be labor, pure PDP man. We talk. We've shared so much ideas. So many things he wants to 
try to do. And regardless, the thank you. Regardless, the party that is still my local government. Sorry, thank you. Thank pay you. Me small, thank small. You. I don't thank want to talk too much because if they pay my bill. I understand, my brother. I understand you very well, and I understand where you're coming from. Uh, comparing yeah, both countries, when you look at the UK where you reside, and you look at your birthplace, Nigeria, is is totally incomparable. Uh, the reason is that the way things is done, th the way things are done in the UK, and things are done in Nigeria. You cannot comprehend why Nigeria cannot get their ass together, which I understand very well as a Nigerian and someone who was born, bred, and in Nigeria, born and bred up in Nigeria. I understand very well. Could you? Uh, that takes me to the next my next question in line. Could you please elaborate on the specific challenge that you've encountered? while residing in the uk or in the western world if you feel tell us some of the experience where you don't experience for the use for the uk okay where you day we're gonna make you begin the reason say ah i wish i did my country the truth of the matter is this nobody go, i've lived in uk i've traveled around europe and i live considerable amount of time in america that's one of the reasons i know i have to go back home I don't grow old rich enough to know, say, you know, old age not going to make me pass like this for this country. You see, unless we are honest, you see, we Nigerians living here, the reason why we can excel a little bit, we have this mentality. This is not my home. So we have a high level tolerance for bullshit. Say, nah, nah, with some time, I go, I go go back. But you go back one year, two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, go no, you don't bore your picking, don't turn to British. They are here. You understand? So we have a high level of tolerance or looking the other way because this not my country after all, even though I'm a British citizen born or inherited, it's not my country. You understand? So we have the high level of tolerance. But yeah. the truth of the matter is the level of tolerance does not eliminate the discrimination from day-to-day -day racism, from from lack of opportunity or limited or limited progress or even limited progress you understand if you are a black owned businesses you try to apply for public funds the, the scrutiny on you is very very high i i work as a consultant for many organizations in the care industry helping them to set up care home or manage care home and care agents the level of scrutiny they put on you and i see none African businesses that are Asian, white, and everything, and the level of good demand, they put, I can tell the parity. I became a, the reason why I became a specialist on it because I have a variable client base and I see how I need to juggle some things. I even, this is even, this is a common thing. I even have an Asian company and I said, listen, and another company was an African one. I said, you guys are too, too ethnic. In order for them to be able to get their fund, hello, I say in order for them to be able to, you need to put a white name and a white face in, in the in the interface. Hello, I can hear you. I'm here. Hello, I can hear you. I can. Yeah, I can see like you. I, saying, I can I hear you. For me, like I. Yeah. Okay. For like I was saying for me your your well for like i was saying to this couple of this small organization that in order for you to have a successful pathway and quick response you need a face and a name that is not asian or african my name is daniel martins i use i have a middle long name which is but nobody use daniel Martins, and he allows so many things to get through on three they see my face or something and i have to play that game I, I just said an organization that was the organization blew overnight because they employed one person as a project manager who is an English person. I do 
and me and the guy we just put the quality assurance and everything and everything was just running smooth i did that with another black owned business so you need to employ a white person a white lady preferred so when the quality people come the funding people come this is the person that is interacting with them or else you ain't gonna get anything and that was it and that might be so too i say like we nigerians we know how to, we understand the game so we have tolerance but imagine the second third generation black 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 or african african born here that would be very often they wouldn't take that likely or acceptable understand they'll be flare up like what the hell this is why you see second third generation jamaicans people tend to judge them as if they've not been successful but they're not judging them saying you know what these people are facing the worst kind of discrimination that's made them less productive than their first generation parents that came with the, with the boat to come and work as the short of labor in UK. Because those are first generation of the Caribbeans that came, they were okay working, doing average job, doing the cleaning, the hospital, the security, even though they were being abused, no black, no Irish, yeah, they, they were able to tolerate it. Because back of their mind, they said, this is not their own. Come to the third, fourth, fifth generation of those people, they won't tolerate it. And you can see the demise of the Caribbean people in the public space in UK. Because they see themselves, and this is their home as British as home can be, but the discrimination never left. And the reason many of us who get children here always tell them about Africa, always encourage them to visit, always let them know where they're from, their ancestors' ground, and let them visit, and let them know who they are so that they're not defined by what they hear or see. I'll give another example. Watch the TV news to see how discrimination works. If a black person, I'm not condoning crime, if a black person do something, let's say he run a traffic light and he jam another car, the first thing the news will say is black. That's the color the first of all. Race. Not black man run through it like then kills or go and jam somebody, even though it's an accident. You understand? They don't even know if it's male, female, old, young, it's number one black. Then, then they're now telling the story. Maybe then the evidence was, oh, no, it wasn't him that ran through the light. It, oh, it's the other guy that didn't stop for the light, then they jam each other. But what they would say, they, then they will now rephrase the story. The black person was on patient because the other person run through the, they will never even mention the other person somebody someone they will even try to avoid the gender to protect the person so they don't want it to be a white male or white female they will never say the color even protect the gender someone until they saw, until they get official this when they get official person they don't express the color they'll just say the man they'll say the person name as in neutralizing it that is no it's not about gender or color but they will always say the black person they will always say the black person color first. So be scared of a black man. Because that's why I say you say black man. And that's the way they put, perpetuate this narrative. Black is dangerous. Black is to be scared. Mr. Say a black man. And if you are me, that I have a culture, a tradition, and a place, it's easy for me to outlook and say, I'm going back home one day. Uh, you understand? But imagine the second, third generation where many Caribbean kids are facing, because this is all they have. So when they hear that, they get irate. They get deeply wounded. And that's a problem. And that is why we Nigerians here, not only are we teaching our you always need to tell your kids the right to return back home is a must. It's a must. It's a must. You understand? And that's it. Heaven forbid if I was to die here, cremate me and take my body, the ashes home and spray on the land of my fathers, of my forefathers. You understand? That's it. So the, the, the level of beef, 
Look at the thing that happened. Many students now in universities in UK that were supporting the UK economy, paying almost 12,000 a year. They're chasing them back. All to all the pretense that they're reducing immigration. If you take foreign students out of which 80% of them are Nigeria, many Nigeria, many British universities will close down. There's over 900,000 jobs available today in UK, as they say. 80% of these new jobs have been taken over, the middle and working class jobs have been taken over by foreigners, most especially Nigerians. How many of these so called British white people are training their kids to become a care worker? Those white people you see that become a care worker. Care worker. So these are the destitute, the low of the lowest. I have a professor from Nigeria. You are a care worker. You see the difference? Look at the white people doing the media job. They are the worst, the lowest of the lowest people. And those white people, when they do a couple of training in that job, they will make them your manager, even though you are a professor. They will tell you, oh, she has more experience because she's been doing it for over a year or two years or three years before you join. Whereas you are an academician, you can take over. Management does not require much. Money is an application of knowledge. You understand? I remember uh, I, I, there's a care home that I have a problem. And the, one of the problems they have is service delivery. And, I know, and when I got there, I look at their staff background from the receptionist to the manager, to the, I mean, to the core team leaders and everything. They have no proper training or background. In-house training they've done, I've not expanded beyond the mandatory and a couple of other training. And I said to them, you need more professional qualified people. You need more qualified people. The qualified people see we are God, they are majority black. Not because doesn't matter. I looked at it, they bring up, and I see I see where the problem is. They're afraid because majority of their clients are, you know, not black. So they're afraid to bring in the qualified people who are not as, you know, as one of them. And they don't want all their, their management to be over. I say you have two choices. Right Thank now, you. Thank you. Thank you. This position. You can get it. These people for and you lose your CQC, you lose you can keep looking for equivalent. And the point is the equivalent white person with a level five with a qualification on public and everything to bring in or a nurse is asking for an arm and a leg because they know they can go anywhere. So for me, I'm sorry to say that thank you so much, my brother. Yeah, yes, as you're saying, for me, this is not bed of roses. There's more opportunity in Nigeria. Don't sell your house, don't sell your car, don't sell Say your land. Thank you. If you sell and come off for Lagos, you know. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Be thank you so much, my brother. Uh, before we continue, let me just show there's a book that was written by my humble self. The book is called Migrant on the Siege. I'm gonna give you a little bit of uh, the background on this book. This is just one of more than 10 books of mine that is currently on Amazon. The Migrant on the Siege book is chronological narration that unravels the dark side of the Western nation and how migrants are being systematically discriminated against. The memoir records, recounts, sorry, touching stories of how migrants especially those of African descent are being systematically, economically, socially kept under siege in the Western nation. The book is a piece with an interesting story of actual events which mirrors all areas of human life outside the shores of African continents. It offers hopes to those who are trapped in the so-called democratic nations. I urge every one of you, type the word migrant on the siege 
and the book will come out. You can order a copy or you can wait a little bit for dynastyprincebook.com to become available where you can download and read the book with a subscription of a monthly, quarterly, or yearly fee. But if you want the art copy of the book, you can order it by tapping the word Migrant on the Siege. The book, again, is a chronological narration that unravels the darkest side of Western nation. Stories that you will read from this book is not on the media, it's not on the print, it's not on, on any front page of any uh, uh, newspaper, but you'll be able to read undiluted from this very book. It's about 161 pages book. Whatever you need to know about Western nation from United States, Canada, Australia, South Africa, New Zealand, Europe, and every part of the continent. You'll be able to read from this book. It's a piece that summarize everything that you need to know. Especially when it comes to the negative experience that people might have experienced over their course of residing in the Western nations. You'll be able to read on this very particular book. I have quite a lot of interesting book. I'm an author on the other side. You read, I have a couple of books that also, that probably will be uh, that would change the narrative for Africans and Nigerians and African per se. For example, there's a book also, if you type the word Refugee Project, it's on Amazon. It's my one of my books. My Ghosts Will Haunt You is another book that is coming out in the next one, a week or so. It should be on Amazon. This three book, I have over 10 books on Amazon, but these three books will change your perspective when it comes to Western nation. I also have another book that probably will be on Amazon in another two weeks. It's called Step by Step by well, Step by Step Legal and Migration from Africa, authored by Prince Ewomade Konkans. That's also one of my books. And uh, also, there's another book, Nigeria Abandoned by, by Citizens. That's also one of my books. I'm asking you that you should type the word, this word that I've just stated on Amazon. You'll be able to read more so you can understand the negative experience that people like us, people like Chief MD, and others who have come before us might have experienced in the Western nation, all that glint us are not gold. I want you to remember that. All that glint us are not gold. People are selling their properties. People are, are selling their life and all they've suffered for in order for them to seek for a different part of the world that they think the grass is more greener than where they currently reside. But the story is different. Where you are is far better more than where you think we are. We are here because the situation demand. When you spend most of your life, most of your adulthood, or most of your young, youthful age in a society, it is difficult for you to relocate back. That's why you see most of Nigerians Africans, indeed, are stuck where they are today. We live in a democratic society where people think they are democratic in values, but the situation, the story is quite different in action and in words. Let me take you back, my brother, uh, Chief MD. Yeah. Uh, if... Let's go back. My next question to you. Mm -hmm. 
Do you believe that foreigners often face intentional adversity in their host country? Can you hear me? Hello? You're breaking. I can't hear you properly. I didn't hear the question properly. I apologize. Okay, sorry. Hello? Uh, let me rephrase the question. Uh, uh, can you hear me now? Yes, please. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go okay. ahead. My next, question, my next question for you is, do you believe that foreigners often face intentional adversity in their host countries? What was the first part of that? I didn't get the first part. Sorry. Do, do you believe that foreigners often face intentional adversity in their host countries? Of course. And it's not just intentional. It's calculated evil. <laughs> you understand? I'll tell you for for fact, the way the pension scheme work in this civilized society is very clear. They need new workers, younger workers, to work and pay taxes in order for the pension pot to be able to pay the current retirees and others and many to join in. Across Europe, the aging population is increasing. The birth rate is decreasing very rapidly, faster than the, than the speed of life. An average European gets to her 30s before she could have kids. And now with UK for the last 20 years, I'm very sure they restrict benefit to just two kids. Why did they do that? They did that not because they think, oh, no, this is good economically. They did that because they realized, most especially the Asians, they have like five, six, seven, eight kids, and they are all on benefits. You understand? And they see the average white are having one or two kids maximum, which you understand. So they passed a law. In order to deprive that and say, you know what, we don't want to pay for the extra any of two kids. So without looking at it, it will affect their own people who already birth rate already dropped. Rather than looking at a way to sustain that and everything. So in essence, look at the politician. Rather than addressing the economic issues within the state, they use immigration as a weapon. The immigration, like in UK, have been decreasing, have been falling. The, so, so it's been falling, but there's no way to go than to start using the, that as a weapon, looking at student migrants and everything. Before EU, before UK left EU, the, the bulk of the immigration that came to UK were from EU countries. We were from from EU countries, and they have right to move in for physically. But influx of people from Africa and opening up. Many Africans are now migrating within Africa for business. Go to South Africa, see a lot of Nigerians and across Africa as well. You understand? So, and the thing they never tell their citizens is the honesty. Without Nigerian migrants in UK university, UK university will collapse. They will be being subsidized by the by the, by the government and it will not be sustainable. Without foreign workers in the healthcare fields, from nurses, doctor, the NHS will collapse. They don't have enough nurses, enough doctors that are white or care workers. And those people are paying every taxes to finance their own pension. And that's the fact. Go, go to around London. 90% of the service workers, if no more, are foreigners. How many white people train their kids to be a, a bad thing? How many of them training them to be a, a, a care worker? Countries, I trust the community for children, no white babies, but they won't do that because the moment they try to do that, it means the non-white people want to benefit. And the mind of non-white people want to benefit, their population will also grow. That's the reason why in America today they don't have a public health care. 
The reason why they don't have a public health care is only the 13% of black people will benefit just as much as the rest white people will benefit more. So they are against public health care. Even though there are more white people dying of lack of public health care. That's the old history of America. The so-called civilized society does not have a publicly regulated health care. So the old country have always used racism, discrimination, and the platform of immigration to go after a victim. Nigerians, let me just narrow it down. Look, look at just take. For, they changed the policy of saying uh, um, a worker's visa that has been in existence for before Nigeria became flooding it. If you have a working, so the host country capitalized on that discriminatory act without addressing the policy. If the UK government really wants to stop migration today, there are a couple of things they can do. Number one, when, when going to Let's look at the nonsense school fees. When you go and study nursing and get it paid for, and you get paid what I do, they change that simply because they realize no, majority of those doing that, and we're paying to these people. Most of our children are not doing that. That's before used to be guaranteed people were able to get into universities. When the government changed that, the whole idea was to cripple um, um, families of minority not to go to school. They didn't anticipate that minority family would take the student loan. The, that's why the student loan allow a lot of minority to get into better school, to a better university, do better course. Before, if you're minority black, you want to do medicine, engineering, they, there was no funding for you. There's no even opportunity for you. So minority people to study whatever and try to apply to any university. Now you are the customer. It's not the state or the university that control the finance. It's you. If you do not apply, they don't have the money. And the reason why the university decided to open up their university to foreign students. You understand? So that's it. That's the only reason they decide. You know what? Because the money is no more there. So the student don't allow minority to apply for the loan. They're now making it very stringent and difficult graduate if the student loan wasn't there they would not have had access to funding to get a publicly funded education because it would be based on the funds for you but if you're from the white trustee of the government you have the money they will not even be able to apply to certain courses because the funding will not be there from your local government to get so student loan eliminated all that does he also disadvantage the average white who have um, 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 enjoyed the privilege to just for the color of their skin to get into the best schools, to get the best schools, get all the funding? Now it's no more there. You just get the general funding like everybody has applied to the same school with qualification. If you can, look at the school in Peckham that majority of the students are Nigerians, that they all got A plus and went to Cambridge and Oxford from Peckham. From Pekka, and those kids are second generation Nigerian kids. Their parents are still very rooted Nigerian person. They are said, they said below them as well. One school, just one school is in Pekka. One school. They went to Ivy school. Produce first class students to keep the minority down, but somehow we're breaking through. The old countries 
are capitalizing on that. If all Africans were to, let me just get today, UK economy, look at what's happening to France. Why complain? Oh, before. Now, African countries, that French countries, and France are as strong, oh Lord, they're not breaking away from Niger to Mali and all that. Guess what the last, the former French finance minister said? It was, he said, my chrome was, I'm paraphrasing, something too stupid or too crazy that he allowed the Africans to wake up or wise up. So he let, basically, he said, Micron allowed the Africans to open their eyes. That's why they're taking back their resources. Niger, they suffered or they're selling for $200 in the market. Niger was getting less than uh, 70 uh, cents. And France will take it, take it to France for $200. Even Mali does not even, I think it's Mali also. Their currency, they don't even have power to have their own savings. They have their central bank in France. They use French, they will borrow their own money. Now, some French people are angry with Macron. So they are they're angry with Macron that the Africans are waking up. And so it's Macron's fault because it's taking back their country and their power. So imagine all Jamaicans decide, you know what? We're going to start holding on strongly to our Jamaican. We're going to start going home. You're going to start building homes there. Just like Nigeria. The level of respect will come. We will not have people like Kevin Barnard or the, the two former home secretary who are self eating people who want to be accepted by the mainstream white society with everything they do or say is to eat their fellow self themselves and everything so that they can, can be accepted. And those are the people they accept. Unlike people like Dan Abbott. You see the difference? And we cannot, that it doesn't happen in Nigeria as well. If you look at the North and the South of Nigeria, they're so very much not different either. And I was a man who would say ebook and all rule. I know that's a different story, but that's also, so for me, discrimination that we face here by host countries is something that we can easily outgrow, the right of return. The moment they know, know we are happy to go back and start preaching it, this will change. They will change. They need you. They thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you, my you. very own brother. To thank you so much. Uh, are you? We are almost. Uh, it's cheap. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you so much. Uh, we have come to uh, the end of uh, today's program. Uh, I'm going to ask you the my very last questions, and um, I also want you to use this as your closing uh, remark for my audience to understand where we are today as as citizens of our of the great country of Nigeria and from the continent of Africa. In your own words, for your own, for your own mouth, I want me to tell my audience and Nigerians in the diaspora, what can be your advice to them as per selling of their properties, I can't hear what you said. 
get in with get you. Can, can you hear me? Can yeah, you hear I can me? hear you now. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I can I hear you now. Go ahead. Own, yes. I said I want I want you to use this as your closing closing remark. If from your own mouth and in your own words, I want me our people hear from you. What will be your advice? What you go advise this generation and the one we will come after this one when it comes to issue of selling everything where they don't work for all their life? Just to relocate to where they think, say the green, the grass, they more green now. In a nutshell, where it, where people think life is more beautiful than we are, which advice you will give them in your own words? I want me to hear from you. It's, you have the floor. Be my advice, I believe in, refer, in reference to Nigerians. If that's correct, you've gone off the air again. I believe what you're asking me, what's uh, my advice to Nigerians? I can yes, hear you, but you keep that's, going that's it. I don't know why but, yeah, the enemy is trying good. to interrupt the system, my, but uh, we must prevail over there. Advice, uh, the good Nigeria is very simple courage. I'm not going to discourage anybody who wants to live not to live because the situation is die hard. I'm not going to discourage anyone who have the opportunity to leave or to, to stay. But what I'm going to what. What I'm going to do, Amen. I, we can hear you. We can hear you. Hello, we can hear you. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I we can hear you. I can hear you. So I keep cutting off and on. What, what yeah, just go, just go ahead. Experience. Go ahead with your That's closing, so, uh, closing remark. We can hear you. That's right. What I'm going to say to Nigerians is, uh, but most especially at home, is that I'm not, not going to discourage anyone to travel, not to travel. I'm not going to discourage anyone to the is there to leave the country not to leave? But what I'm going to do is to encourage those who chose to stay behind, who chose to try to find it. Those are the people I'm appealing to. Don't give up. Don't give up. Look for something on how to expand. If you're in Lagos, if Lagos no money, go to the village. If the village did not pay you, go to the next village. Don't give up. Nigeria will get better. Join a, a local community leaders. Join a local party. Contribute. Add to the discussion. Let your voice be heard. And take opportunity to challenge leaders who have been there have contributed nothing. There are some professional election leaders. Every election year, they run around, they collect money from aspirants and everything, keep it in their pocket and do nothing. You need to challenge them to bring change. Now that we they pass the law to develop power to look at community chairman, look at government chairman, and the court, the government taking the, the state governor to court. The time the time will come. Look at your local chairman will become very powerful. They control the finance and development of that local community. And, and that is where you you need to be, be, you need to be telling your own community leaders. We need to choose a local chairman. Then to us and deliver the service we need. And that's very important. Don't give up on Nigeria. Help is coming. 
I'm coming home to join you too soon. Now, blessed. Hello, I, I, I don't know. I think we should. I can hear you. I can hear you. Hello. I can hear you. If you can see me waving, that means I can hear you. It keeps freezing and everything. So I think we should just try to connect. Yeah, back, 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 back. yeah, back, I can hear you. Uh, anyway, I think we just, uh, our brother just uh, uh, lost his connection on the live stream program. Anyway, we've come to the end of today's addiction of this program. Uh, one thing I want to say for a fact is that it's not all that glinters that is good. And I urge every Nigerian, every African to type the word migrant under siege on Amazon. Go on Amazon, the word migrant under siege. There's a book called Migrant Under Siege. You'll be able to learn from that book. If you can have purchase that book, you will read some of the mind blogging information that you can never find anywhere. There are quite a lot of information on that book, very useful. That book was written by my humble self for the children of uh, the African nation, uh, Nigerian and African nations, for them to learn that it's not all that glinters are gold. So I'm encouraging you all to read that book. It is history, it is literature, it is a fact. You will never find any of the information on that book and any of the public media. That's one of the reason that the, the those in the eye authority are coming after me. If anything were to happen to me as a person, remember what I said on this program. It's all about that book, Migrant on the Siege. Until next time, same time, until next week, sorry, next same time, same place, I remain your humble brother. Pray.